Now I have three and a tree. Okay, this joke is getting old. Hey there guys! The landscape for buying electronics and 3D printers in UK has changed quite a bit. A lot of items are simply not available immediately in UK because Brexit. Or you're gonna end up paying a much more than a listed price because of the import duty. That and the fact that you're gonna wait forever for the parcel to arrive because obviously it's gonna get stuck at customs. So when Geek Buying sent me an email saying like, hey, you should really check out our stores and warehouses because we cater to the UK. I was actually quite impressed. I quickly ran the prices of Enter 3 S1 on the Geekbyte page and what I would have paid by importing it and came to the conclusion that actually it's not a bad deal, especially that you can get a printer within a couple of days. So if you're in Europe or UK, or definitely in UK, then give them a go. Uh, link is in the description because you might be surprised on what is actually st uh, stored in the warehouses in the UK, making your shopping experience much more easier. And that partnership gave me an excellent idea to secure a new printer, and the 3 S1, which is something I had an eye for a while for a couple of reasons. Priced around 320 ish pounds, this is not one of the cheapest Ender 3 series printers, however it comes with a lot of features that you probably would have upgraded to anyway, so let's go through feature list. One of the biggest change is the sprite print head, that includes a geared extruder and a hot end. That's going to be quite helpful for anyone trying different filaments, especially those flexible filaments that do so much better when the direct drive is provided. Anyone looking for stability and consistency of a print will appreciate dual Z-axis, meaning that there are two stepper motors lifting X country up and down for the greatest stability. It won't probably improve your prints that much, however, you'll find yourself looking at the gantry less often during your regular maintenance because, well, it's going to be working just fine. Other things that come as standard with this printer are the sear attach, the latest edition of auto leveling and the filament runout sensor which will pause the print for you and allow you to change the spools on the go without ruining your print. Very handy. Actually created one from the Z stopper limit switch, if you're interested in that you might want to check this video. All of that goodness is wrapped in a new package. It doesn't really resemble any of the previous Ender trees, however it has a really nice neat look to it thanks to the included ribbon that connects the print head with the rest of the printer. Now the controller board is hidden deep inside and it also has been subject to change. First of all, the micro SD card slot has been ditched in favor of the regular SD card, something that I do welcome actually, and you have a USB Type-C to connect to the printer. And I'm over the moon over that simple upgrade that brings that controller to the 21st century. Thank you, Creality. Speaking of the controller board, it's one of those quiet 32-bit ones based on the Algolary that STM32 F103 IC, which means your coil's not going to whine as much when you're printing. Not like on the original end uh, anyway. But what's looking quite familiar is also the display, which was taken from Ender 3 V2. It's the same display, it's not touch display unfortunately, but it's nice, bigger and more colorful. And I have to give it to Creality. This S1 printer looks much neater thanks to the ribbon cable that manages all the cables for you and overall design, which, well, it looks really sleek. But if all of those features aren't enough, then you can always opt out for the Pro version of the S1 series printer. Now on the Pro version, you'll also see a couple of extra things. Starting with a changes in a sprite extruder, which will be capable of printing up to 300 degrees of Celsius. That will enable you to print more exotic filaments, but you won't get as high as me on the water-cooled extruder. The video is there for you if you want to raise that up to 500 degrees. Well, anyway, back to this printer. On top of that, you're also going to get a touch display on the Pro Series. Something that I really regret isn't included by default on S1, because I really wanted to test it out. I'm a big fan of 
touch displays on printers because manipulating the knob on the printer and trying to select everything is just a, such a pain in the neck. And the last change on the Pro Series printer is the included light at the top which connects to the socket located at the back also present on non-pro version. So if you want to come up with your own light solution you'll be able to hook up to this port and use it to your advantage. But both printers also come with some modules that you can add to improve the printing process further. First, you will be able to add the water cooling block. It looks like Creality is jumping on the board of water cooling, providing you with the ability to water cool your extruder. And if 3D printing isn't enough and you fancy some engraving, then you can swap entire printhead on the laser engraver and use your machine as a laser engraver, which is actually quite fun. I've covered a couple of laser engravers in my videos, so do check them out, I'm gonna link them in a corner. When I got the printer a couple of days ago, I decided to run a live stream, on which I obviously assembled the entire printer, and I was actually amazed. Even though the live stream was over an hour long, the actual assembly took me more or less 20-25 minutes, because everything was partially assembled, and all I had to do is just put the gantry on, and the print head, and connect the cables and the printer was ready to go. Honestly, I know it's uh, my third printer that I've assembled, but that was a piece of cake. And I have no doubt that anyone just getting started with 3D printing will have no problem connecting a couple of components together and assemble this pretty quickly, problems free. And this seems to be a recurring theme with this printer because as soon as I've assembled it, I started a new print. I ignored the bed leveling and changing all the settings. All I wanted to do is just load the SD card and let it run to find out how badly it's gonna do. Turns out, not at all. It was printing pretty well. So well that in fact I've cracked the speed to 300% and it was still capable of delivering pretty good print. And yes, there is a layer shift on the print, however this is on me because I completely forgot to tension the belt and I retention it during the print. So yeah, that's my fault. All of that leaves me with the impression that if you ever wanted to get a 3D printer for maybe your kids or family member, then Ender 3S1 seems to be a really good choice because They'll have a great experience getting started with 3D printing without previous knowledge and you're not going to get flooded with all the questions about how things work and why the printer isn't printing well. And this is something that we can all relate. Just bear in mind guys, this is not why I condone. I do encourage you to spend some time to understand your hobby and probably tinker or at least level your bed before you start printing your projects out. So I took some time to actually tinker with the printer, change some settings and test a couple of prints to figure out how good is it. In my first print I went for the calibration cut printed at maximum acceleration and maximum speed to see how it's gonna hold up and to be honest I don't have any problems with it. And yes, the print isn't perfect and you can see a couple of holes, but I suspect they are caused by old filament that got some moisture and those are simply a pockets of air that burst during the print, so I'm not going to blame the printer for that. To prove that point, I've slowed down the printer from excess of 150mm per second to 75 and set up my first articulated print. This one here. The lizard printed in about 5 to 7 hours, I don't remember exactly, but it was set to 0.1 layer height to get that really nice looking feel for your print and it looks really really good. And the best part is I didn't have to spend time faffing about with different settings or making sure the bed is super flat and super even and leveled and everything. It all just worked, which is probably what all of you are looking for. All of this just proves my point that Ender 3S1 is beginner's friendly machine and if you are just getting started with the hobby you should definitely check it out even though there are less expensive printers out there. There is one more question I'd like to answer. This is my third Ender 3 printer and they all share similar parameters. So they have build volume of 220cm by 220cm with this going as high as 270 So why did I pick this instead of going for something bigger this time around since my other two printers are Ender 3 as well? 
Well, there is something very interesting about the price point. As I mentioned before, Ender 3 S1 costs around 320 ish pounds, which is, coincidentally, how much in total I spent on my upgraded Ender 3. And the S1 Pro costs around £420, which is more or less how much my Ender 3 V2 is worth right now with all the upgrades. Which poses an interesting question. Should you spend the money on the cheaper printer and the upgrades, or should you go for S1 series printer? Unfortunately, the answer is going to be slightly different for me than there is for you. First of all, quiet 3D printing is something that is really important to me, and most of my upgrades I've done on both Ender 3 and Ender 3 V2 were to make those machines absolutely silent, so I can print on those machines while having ability to record the videos for YouTube. I understand that this might not be your preference, however, that was definitely mine, and that's what guided me through the upgrading of the machines. So if you do want to have absolutely silent printing, there's an entire video about it in a corner for you. But I have to be honest here, looking at the specification of my upgraded Ender 3 versus S1 and Ender 3 V2 versus Pro, I hardly see any reason to go with upgraded options. I mean, other than a water cooling factor and printing up to 500 degrees, which I'm probably not going to take advantage of anytime soon, I'm not getting really extra features or values other than the satisfaction that I have a cool water cooled printer and I've made it myself. I'd say S1 performs as well as the upgraded NS3s, so there is really not a reason not to pick one of these if you can't afford it. But before you go to the description of this video and start clicking on the links, there's a couple of things that you should be aware of. First of all, it printed okay on the first go, however, the next day I had problems with sear touch. After two hours of troubleshooting, I finally discovered that was probably a loose connector. I never actually know what fixed it, but me poking around long enough fixed it and the printer is now working and didn't give me any problems since, so fingers crossed. If you're gonna put it yourself, double check all the connectors that are plugged in correctly so that won't happen to you. The second thing I would question is the actual ribbon connector. Don't get me wrong, I really love this thing because, well, it organized the cables in a nice way, but I don't think this is a perfect design, especially that when the gantry is moving from left to right, the ribbon will touch the frame and that may actually cause the damage to the ribbon. It's too early to tell right now, but I have my suspicion that it might cause a problem in the future, so I'll be paying a close attention to this. Another thing is the form factor. Despite having a very similar build volume to other Ender trees, this machine is much wider, which means if you're just going to get rid of your one of the Ender trees and hoping to replace uh, with S1, be prepared to make a little bit more space for that. And the last thing to watch out for are the upgrades. This overall is a really nice solution, however, it is a custom solution as well. I haven't seen this ribbon cable before, but it is attached to the motherboard, which means you'll have to have a compatible motherboard that can accommodate this ribbon cable. The same goes for the print head. And now, while individual components like thermistors and etc. can be replaced because they have dedicated connectors on the printhead itself, if you're going to upgrade to aftermarket uh, parts, then you'll have to probably consider the fact that sooner or later you'll have to replace everything the printhead, the ribbon cable, and the motherboard to accommodate for different parts. Over the time, this might change, and more companies will be issuing upgrades compatible with this line of printers. However, as it stands right now, it's going to be very difficult and very challenging and expensive to upgrade one of these. But overall, I think this is a great machine, especially for beginners. So if this video helped you to change your mind about the S1 series, let me know. Big thanks to Geekbuying for providing the product for review and offering a couple of extra discount codes, which is going to be available in the description, so you could grab this printer for a really attractive price, especially if you are in the UK. And don't worry guys, in Europe you also get European warehouses as well, so go and have a browse. As for now guys, you know how it works. i probably gonna end up silencing this printer because it's much louder than my other Ender's trees. And if I want to use it and print it in here, then I have to make sure it doesn't 
disturb my recording process. And since I don't have any schedule, then you know how to keep in touch, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you all that. But do follow me on any given social media of your choice, and you'll find out why am I up to and what's gonna be up on the channel next. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Take care. Bye.